We hike up the 800-foot driveway that ascends the hill, the leaves as crisp below us as the air around us. Closer. The object of our trek into the woods today is a place that has become dear to me, a little visited and mostly forgotten 19th century castle-like mansion that sits atop an 18-acre rocky hilltop overlooking the nearby city. Hill House. The builder of this mansion was Elias Starr Sanford, who was a well-known photographer of high society and theater elites in New York City. Some people say that Sanford was an early contributor to the creation of movie cameras. The castle was meant to be initially a honeymoon house for his wife and was built at the peak of his success. Work started in 1895 and completed in 1899 using local stone and wood from Italy. In those early days, it became known as Sanford Castle. After only five years of owning it, Sanford, who disliked the mansion, sold it to the Buck family in 1902. Sanford afterwards suffered a strange and horrible fate. In 1914, while on a ship, he was struck by lightning and the blood vessels in his eyes were severely damaged. He died three years later. The Buck family then held the house until 1918 as a summer residence, when they too sold it to Charles Darling Park. Charles meant for it to become a wedding gift for his daughter, Irene Parks. It was renamed to Hearthstone Castle after its eight large fireplaces. Irene died in 1982 and her descendants, the Jennings family, moved in, living there until 1987 when the house was sold to the city and left to gradually decay. The foundation of a small building tells us we are near. Slowly the castle appears above. The unique architecture of the mansion is truly something to see. Very much built like a Norman castle with battlements, dark granite, and a keep-like appearance, the mansion is a very unique structure. Around the side, a D-shaped tower.
back porch is enveloped in vines. Peeking through them is the original detailed woodwork. We decide to take a look through the window. This square back area is where once stood the kitchens and butler's quarters. Shelves still line the walls and a radiator, rusted, has fallen through the floor. Inside is complete ruin, a huge tangle of fallen boards, timber, and walls. Ducking into an old basement window allows access into the twisted wreckage inside. This central stack of fireplaces still stands, with remnants of the beams of each floor running to the main structure. Looking up into the ruins, it is hard to imagine the grand 17-room mansion as it once was. Luckily, the architect and of course the owners left some records for us. Travel with us for a moment, back in time, through the lost interiors. Walking into the mansion through the glazed front entry door, one was led through a hall with studded beams, wood paneling, and carved lions in oak. From there was the dining room with a pine paneled door, a large window, and a green glazed brick fireplace. To the east of this lay the music room. This space was warmed by a peach marble fireplace with a carved scallop motif. To the west of this was a library with a red brick fireplace and oak door. On the back side of the floor was the kitchen area we previously looked inside of. From the first floor hall, a grand oak stair led above to a large stained glass window with the family coat of arms. On this second floor was then another green glazed brick fireplace and a door leading to a second library with yet another fireplace. From that room, were four bedrooms and a fifth large master bedroom in the tower. Lastly, above this, on the third floor, were five simple servants' bedrooms. Doors, windows, and cabinets still line the walls.
once great porch that ran along half the outside, giving views of the surrounding area, is now collapsed in the middle. The second now detached porch section leads to the blocked main entrance. Yeah, this is way worse than before. of the area above has created a tunnel of sorts along the bottom of the house, broken by windows that peek into the cellars. A last cellar window gives an interesting view of the inside.
two rusted supports and some rotten beams seem to be all that holds back the huge weight of the collapsed sections above the basement. Arches of the carriage port now form a looming church-like structure. To the rear of the building, we discover still standing remnants of associated buildings. Here in the surrounding area was a carriage house, keeper's cottage, a barn, and the still remaining woodshed and water tower that poke up at us in the distance. Silo, maybe, or something, or a water tank? Water tank. Just to hide it in the tower. Huh. No, it's all rotted through. That's neat. While we've shown you the building and its remaining outbuildings, it's notable that the entire location is surrounded by a retaining wall circling its hilltop. Along this wall is the large stone stair that once led up the hillside to the lawn. Parts of the old remaining walls have begun to collapse and roll down the hill. The scene from below would have been the intended appearance projected to those locals living below the hill. From here, it very much resembles a Norman castle or an imposing fortified manor house. Yet today, the most striking part of Hearthstone is the simple fact that many other smaller mansions like it survive in the region and serve as major landmarks and tourist attractions, such as Searles, Hammond, Gillette, and Ocean Cliff Castles. This is the true tragedy of this place. I came here today with you, however, to record its swan song, as in a final development in 2016, the city passed a bill to partially demolish the castle due to safety concerns and turn the rest into a garden. In its last moment, it stands, for now, a hulking stone ruin still looming over the city below, high on its hill, its halls silent, its hearths cold and empty forever. Join us next exploration as we enter and travel through an abandoned train tunnel. This episode is dedicated to the memory of Chris Bowman, friend and explorer. Subscribe and explore with us today.